Welcome in to the Friday, August 18, 2023 installment of Market Plus. We continue with dot, 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 Mark Gold. You got more uh, dots and dashes to go here? You know, I never learned Morse code, but I wish I had. <laughs> I'm going to send you questions in Morse code. I would <laughs> fail too. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned something during the broadcast that I wanted to circle back to, and we have a question. We'll get to it in a minute. Uh, I had a couple farmers say to me at the fair, oh, I haven't priced anything from last year yet, or I still have it in the bin, or I haven't priced anything for this year yet. But so many people have been bailed out by, I call them, fourth quarter rallies. We've had incredible runs the last few years. So that sets up Phil and Ontario's question a little bit. The grain price narrative has grown increasingly bearish, especially with improved crop readings. Will this change based on the time left in the crop year, or will harvest lows make these prices look good now? So did all these people miss the boat? Well, they've certainly missed a couple of the boats. We've had some good rallies that they had an opportunity to sell. Um, we've talked about it many times. We, what we hear in Chicago is that a lot of farmers have gone for these DP delayed pricing contracts. Well, how's that worked for you this year, guys? You know, I think it's the real bane of American farmers. Why you would give up ownership of the grain and not have it priced is beyond me. But farmers seem to like it. Certainly there's one or two commercials that push it. And uh, there's a reason they do. It takes the steam out of a bull market because now they've got the grain. They don't have to pay for it. And it's detrimental, in my opinion, for the American farmer. But if you haven't done anything, maybe this heat market in the next week will give you a good opportunity to sell something. But there's a lot of grain around the world. Uh, you look at Russia, their crop seems to be getting bigger and bigger. Uh, Ukraine's getting grain out. So despite all the problems that we're seeing, prices can move lower. I would take advantage of this heat rally if we get it by late next week. Uh, longer term, uh, I look at some of the other problems that we're seeing in the world, what's happening in India with their weather, flooding up north monsoon in the south. I don't think they've ever seen that. Uh, Spain, Italy, all getting hit with bad droughts. Uh, Argentina looks like they're headed into a drought. Uh, Australia, it's a little bit too early to know. But I think there's a lot of problems potentially in this world, and I think we have shifted the climate a little bit. And uh, I don't want to be bearish $5 corn. I don't want to be bearish $13 beans. Um, but would I, you know, as usual, would I keep a cheap put underneath it in case I'm wrong? I would. Because if things don't happen, if we get rains next week or the week after when we're not expecting it, and maybe it's not as hot and dry, we could certainly make new lows without any trouble. Mm. However, a September rain at this point, yeah. after at the end of that growing cycle, I mean, uh, our friend Matt Bennett, who's downstate from you in yeah. Illinois, had said he was going to do an early harvest, and that was well before. There's a lot of people who were already going to combine in early September in areas that don't normally do it then. Yeah, but they got the corn in early, and they got the beans in early, so maybe there will be more of that. Uh, but make no mistake about it, in places like Kansas, Nebraska, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, southern Iowa, even parts in Wisconsin now, this heat's going to be a problem. And, uh, you know, maybe you get it in before you can. If, but it, how many guys are going to harvest corn and beans in August? Not very many no, people. doesn't happen. I, wanna, I have a weather question. Uh, i, I got to go out of order a little bit. Sorry, folks. Uh, Ken in Saskatchewan wants to know, uh, what is the effect of the above normal temps during South America's weather? You talked about everywhere else, but you didn't. You mentioned Argentina, yeah. but what about Brazil and Argentina and the impact? Well, if Argentina has another drought, and we saw what it did to their crops last year, uh, if Brazil gets caught this year, you know, everybody's looking at the world and saying, you know, what, grains can't rally because Brazil's going to have another big crop of corn and beans, and, you know, it's not going anywhere. Well, you know, what if... Brazil doesn't have the great crop. What if they get hit with the drought, and it's a severe drought down there? Um, we don't know that yet. But would I rather be buying beans and see, or corn and see the drought hit you know, three months from now and own it now rather than at some higher prices three months from now? I probably would, considering we're basically at our lows in here. So, you know, like I said, I'm not bearish here. So you're not in a panic sell for anything yet? No. Absolutely not. On any of wheat, corn, or beans? None of them. I think we're, we've gotten them cheap enough, and I think there's enough problems around the world. 
Uh, people get hungry. Um, what scares me, and probably why I want to take advantage of this rally in the next week or 10 days, is we have the budget coming up. And I don't see any compromise there between the Republicans and the Democrats, and that could put a real wrench into the works here for grain. If we, you know, if they can't settle this thing, and you know, there's default the out here, it's not good. And my, my honest suggestion, you know, for the Republicans and Democrats that are here in Iowa, sit down and get something done because you're going to hurt this country beyond repair if you do it. So that's something looking forward to. But you got to be a little worried about. Mark Gold at the uh, Des Moines Register soapbox right here. Yeah. Way to go. Uh, let's go back to cattle here for a minute. Uh, this is uh, Kennedy Farms in Oklahoma, and they're asking the cattle market seem to be in a sideways trend. Do we continue to see this play out the rest of the year and into the first quarter next year? Well, the cattle on feed numbers and the numbers moving out, you know, through December look pretty tight, which is why we've got, you know, the premium and the bat months out here. Um, I think there are going to be less cattle out here. The question is, what happens to demand? As this box beef moves higher, we're going to cut demand. The best news for the, the meat guys out there is that the consumption of these substitute meat products is starting to tank. I think that's good news for the American uh, rancher out here. So I think demand will stay pretty strong. I think we've overcome the hump of these alternative um, meats. And uh, with the numbers keep moving lower, this heat isn't going to help anything. So. You know, long term, I think you got to be bullish. But again, as mentioned in, in the uh, broadcast, it's hard to see the box beef staying strong. The fat cattle price is not moving and even moving lower. That's got to tell you, you, you got to be a little cautious out here. Mm -hmm. We'll see how the market reacts to the cattle on feed numbers. All right, let's go uh, economic a little bit, a little wider here. This is a pencil question. Mitch in Hull, Iowa wants to know, Mark, with steeper interest rates, versus the last several years. Do you expect storing corn to pencil out over the upcoming marketing year? I don't, and I don't, if you've been watching me a long time out here, you know I don't like storing grain in general. But the answer is, look at your cost to carry. Does that pencil out? And in most cases, it's not gonna pencil out. Why you wouldn't sell the grain, put that money in the bank at five and a half, six percent, and do something with it, rather than sitting on the grain, most likely unprotected, it's just something I wouldn't do. I think you've got to be looking at the whole economic situation, take advantage of the high interest rates, and prepare yourself, and don't get caught putting the grain in the bin, hoping for higher prices in the springtime. It's generally a losing game. Hope and pray is not a strategy that works? Hope and pray is not been in our marketing book. All right, uh, last question also from Mitch in Hull, Iowa, and this one's, uh, again, economic but global. What does a potential slowdown in the Chinese economy mean for producers in the U.S. when it comes to marketing strategies? You can pick any commodity you want. Uh, yeah. You've talked about uh, China a little bit here. China's economy has slowed down, no question about it. Um, is that going to be a drag on U.S. commodity prices? Maybe, but maybe not. Um, Chinese, I think, want pork. I think they want beef, grain, corn, beans. Um, as I've said a thousand times, and I'll continue to say it, there's nothing more bullish for the American farmer than a communist with a, a hungry communist with a dollar in his pocket. The Chinese have the money to buy whatever they need. And, you know, if their economy is slowed, yeah, but they're not going to let their people starve because they know it's a road to disaster if they do. So, in my opinion, you know, the talk will be, oh, the Chinese economy is slowing down. It's not good for the grains, da 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 da. Maybe the funds will sell it, but I wouldn't sell it on that news. Any other news you want to share? I think we've covered it pretty good here we today. Did. Appreciate your time, Mark. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Mark Gold, everybody. Thank you to Mark. And next week, we are going to look at incentivizing farmers to protect a natural resource. And we'll bring in Dan Huber. He'll sit down and we'll have a market analysis segment with him. Thank you for watching this Market Plus. We'll see you next week here on the program. Bye-bye.